families and welcome to Lion Tales. It's the legacy way to read for at least 20 minutes each and every day. We are so excited to kick off week two of our Representation Matters series with our guest reader, Peggy Simmons. Happy reading. Hi, my name is Peggy Simmons and today I'm gonna read Have You Thanked a Kid Venture Today by Patrice McLaurin. I chose the book because it talks about all of the great inventions from, from children. And also, in my profession, I lead a team that works in energy, that uses science, technology, and innovation to bring power to your home. So let's dig in and see some of these stories from these children. Here's a fun fact about inventions. Some of the world's greatest inventions have come from one of the most creative and fun-filled places on Earth. Yes, you guessed it, a child's imagination. See, we should remember that children are scholars with beautiful minds eager to learn new things. And when given the opportunity to share their genius with the world, there's no limit to the joy that they can bring. Take for instance, a boy named George Neeson. He was an athlete on the gymnastics team. One day, he and his brother went to the circus, and he was amazed by the artist on the trapeze. The trapeze artist would perform magical tricks in the air and then fall safely to their nets below. But George imagined how much more exciting it would be if they bounced up again and continued on with the show. So, with the help of his friends and a teacher, he created the most brilliant thing. Using iron scraps and tire tubing, George invented the first trampoline. Thank you, George Neeson. Next, we meet the awesome Robert Patch. He's the youngest person to ever patent an invention. At only six years old, he designed a toy that has been enjoyed and appreciated by millions. You see, this curious and creative kindergartner invented a very special toy truck. It could change from a dump truck to a flatbed truck. And back then, that was really cool stuff. That means he invented two trucks in one, doubling his playtime and doubling his fun. And now, thanks to Robert, the toy truck has been played with by nearly everyone. Thank you, Robert Patch. Of course, we can't forget about Frank Epperson, whose invention was created by mistake. Though his invention wasn't intentional, he still managed to create something great. Young Frank invented the popsicle when he was only 11 years old. After preparing himself a syrupy drink and mistakenly leaving it out in the cold, he rose the next morning after stretching and yawning from a long and peaceful night's sleep, and then went outside to find the most magnificent thing, a frozen treat that was easy to eat. Thank you, Frank Epperson. Now some inventions make our lives much easier, and some of them make our lives more fun. There are also inventions that help solve problems when we can't seem to get something done. So goes the story of Trester Greenwood who was a kid who loved ice skating with friends, but the ear flaps that he wore made his ears red and sore, often bringing his fun to a quick end. Chester realized that he had to solve this problem. He loved ice skating and couldn't bear to give it up. And with the help of his grandma's sewing skills, little Chester invented modern day earmuffs. Thank you, Chester Green Greenwood. Another reason to, de to develop an invention is for something that is a real need. And if you can't afford to buy it, that's a difficult predicament to be in. But what a clever invention lacks is money. They can make up for it with imagination. And they often imagine wonderful ideas that help to improve their situation. As with the story of William Kamkwamba, known as the boy who harnessed the wind, born in an African village in Malawi, he was the second of seven children. William was brought up in a home where there was lots of love, but there was no electricity. However, his village had plenty of wind that could be used to produce clean energy. 
One day, William checked out a library book and learned how to make use of the wind. He found that by building a windmill, he could bring some of his energy problems to an end. So he built his very first windmill, which powered light bulbs and charged cell phones. Through his in inventiveness, 14-year-old William provided electricity and water for his home. Thank you, William Kumquamba. And so, so the lessons, le lessons to be learned from these stories is that you are never too young to use the power and the productivity of your brilliant imagination. If you can think it, you can invent it. All it takes is determination, add in hard work, toss an initiative, sprinkle on talent, and top with inspiration. And the fact of the matter is that it doesn't really matter if you are rich or if you are poor. When that awesome idea pops into your head, don't be afraid, go ahead and explore. Put that big and beautiful brain to work, you just might end up with something cool. And who knows, maybe the next kid in kid venture will turn out to be you. So that's the end of the book. And one thing that was flowed through all of these stories was curiosity. And I'm gonna thank each of you in advance because I know you all are gonna invent something great too.